Now, this is a new segment that Coach Dan's been encouraging me to do on the podcast for a long time. And now that I have all this extra time, I could actually figure out how I wanted to do it because there are a lot of interesting stories in roller derby. And I think the history of the sport is something we should be sharing and passing on, especially if we want to get fans, like real fans, more than just the people who play the sport. I think the way you attract people to the sport is by telling them a story. Stories get people emotionally involved. Being emotionally involved is how you get fans, people who are excited about what you are doing, people who will want to show up at your game. Finally, show up at your game. <laughs> so uh, before roller derby, I was not sporty. I did not do a lot of sports. I did not watch a lot of sports. But after roller derby, I became more interested in other sports. And the reason was usually there was an interesting story like the story of LeBron James moving from team to team, but never quite getting that championship made me want to watch the NBA and watch the finals and see what was going on. Uh, stories of different football teams who struggled and overcame things. And that made me want to watch football. Uh, stories get you into sports. So the story I want to tell you today is about a very special jam. In the beginning of roller derby, the highest scoring jams were tracked, and they were tracked on a website. And if you were one of the people who had one of the highest scoring jams in roller derby, your name went on this list. And I want to tell you the story of a name that is not on this list, and I think is the most impressive highest scoring roller derby jam of all the times. Look at this list. What do you notice about this list? Look at the scores of these games. 683 to 7, 633 to 20, 408 to 57. It's still a lot of laps for these jammers, but look at these scores. Overall, huge point spreads. So what does that tell you? It's a mismatch in, in team. <laughs> it's a mismatched game. So when they score all those points, I mean, yeah, you're gonna. The one I wanna show you is this one. Let me set the scene for you. 2012 WFTDA Championships. This is Texas Roller Girls versus Denver Roller Dolls. This is the third place game. These are two of the best teams in the entire world in 2012. Now this is gonna happen because of a lot of people working really well together, especially these blockers and one very fast jammer the name of Sandrine Ranjong. We're taking a knee due to an old rule in roller derby where we didn't used to start on one whistle. There was a two whistle start. So the first whistle would let the blockers go. And then if they had gotten past the pivot line or there was no pack, that's when the second whistle would blow and release the jabbers. Everyone in roller derby universally agreed that's kind of dumb. And so they started creating a no-pack by one of the teams would take a knee. Sandrine Ranjan is a speed skater and she will be skating in the very next jam. Look at this situation. There is, whoop! <laughs> Juked so hard, fell off her own skates. This is what she's known for is giant jukey moves. There was only one Texas blocker on the track and she's just got to get past that blocker. Meanwhile, look at the work the Denver players are doing to isolate that blocker. Oh, that blocker's actually Bloody Mary. The jammer for Texas is Olivia Shooting John. Back in the way back, there were one minute penalties, so we're not gonna see her for a little while. Oh, wait, there she is. Never mind, she's back now. <laughs> The reason that this jam is going to be so big is because of how devoted the Denver blockers are to making sure no one touches Sandrine Ranjan. And this is a big accomplishment at any level of play, but I feel like this is the biggest accomplishment because of the high level teams here, the quality of their gameplay, that they are at the top of their game in 2012. This 
doesn't happen, this shouldn't happen. And it was just a perfect storm of defense and offense that created all these laps. Still going. And you saw the score at the beginning of this jam. Denver was way behind. <laughs> this was a huge moment for Denver. Goes the full two minutes, just a speed skating jam. Forty-four point jam. This is why she's not even on the list because it was a forty-four point jam. But look at this. Just a master of juking. So good at lateral movement. There aren't very many skaters that are this good at that kind of lateral movement. So there's a lot to learn from watching Sandrine Ranjan. So with that jam, Denver takes the lead. 199 to 210, Denver wins third place in 2012 because of that jam. Calling off with authority, that's how you call off a jam. There is no doubt the jam is being called off here. <laughs> That is story time with Jackie. Let me know if you enjoyed that segment. I just thought that that jam was so impressive. She's not even on the list, but that is by far the biggest accomplishment for a highest scoring jam, I believe, in the history of roller derby. Fight me if you disagree. <laughs>